All right, Steve, we are live. Thank you so much for taking out some time. My pleasure. My pleasure, Mike. So let's jump right in, man. Um, you know, the first Meg movie was a tremendous success. Success. It grossed over $500 million. Um, what are your thoughts for Meg 2, The Trench? And does it kind of follow your second book closely or not? Well, regarding the last question, it's tough to tell because I haven't seen the movie and I haven't read a script. So they keep all that from everybody these days. Uh, there are hints in there, subtle hints that look familiar with the trench. Um, I know that my producer, Bella Avery, who's the lead producer, you know, loves the books. So she'll always try to keep the film somewhat in line to the, uh, to the book, to the source material. Um, as far as my predictions, I, you know, I got to go with a billion dollars. We'll make it one point one billion for a total billion. box office gross. How's that? Hey, man, that works. That works for me, man. I'm excited. I think. Uh, well, <laughs> no, let's go. Ahead. Yeah, no. So you know, I was going to ask how much involvement do you have with the movies, but I think you kind of summed it up there a little bit. Yeah, if, if we're in a hotel, they let me park the cars. That's about all I'm allowed to do. <laughs> part -time, I'm, I'm a part-time valet to Warner Brothers. I love it, dude. That's so cool. Actually, they, they've been great. Warner Brothers has treated me nothing but first class, so I have the only good things to say. Oh, of course, man. Well, the movie looks amazing, so I can't wait. Um, you know, and how is it for you seeing uh, Jason Statham play the character that you created. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. I didn't realize they had given the character such powerful leg muscles that they could keep a 50-ton <laughs> megadon from uh, pushing up against wood. But, you know, and that was just his right leg. I think if he could put both of them, he could really fling that. probably the, do some major up. damage, huh? <laughs> Capillary somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty wild, you know. There's a separation between the novels and the films, and that's there's supposed to be a separation. You know, the novels are, are tense and thrillers, and the movies tend to be you know a little bit more fun for the, all the audience. But uh, you know, they've done a great job, so I, nothing but good things. That's cool, man. I love it. Um, you know, the original book has been out now for over 25 years, right? Did you think that you would be still talking about this book and in the process of writing a seventh book, I believe? Yeah, number seven, which will become, which is uh, Made Purgatory, uh, which uh, I just got the rights back to in a wonderful deal for my publisher so that we could uh, go forward with Make Legacy, which is a seven volume uh, series of books, first time it's ever been done, but it's been forward for about 20 some years. But regarding what I thought 20 years ago, you know, we actually had uh optioned the movie rights to make before I finished the book. Wow, 1996. And um, so we had the movie rights with Hollywood Pictures, which is owned by Disney, and oh. then we saw the publishing rights, and then things flipped upside down. Well, you know, I'm glad it took, uh, you know, this long. The technology and the film, you know, the CGI is pretty outstanding. You know what I mean? That's very true. Yes, I agree. I don't know how it was in, you know, in 96, 97. It really wasn't as as developed as it is today. So, yeah, I, I think that's probably a good thing in a sense. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know, you only have to look at Jaws and realize that the weak part of the film now is the shark. Yeah, true, 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 right? And um, so you you kind of brought it up a little bit. I wanted to chat about about Meg Purgatory. Um, I guess when can we, what can we expect from that and when? I've got about two or three months left of work on Lock 3, um, Heaven Lake. And then uh, I'll go full time into make purgatory. I'm thinking about 12 to 15 months once I get started. I've already got the entire ending outlined of this entire series, which is so cool. I just I can't wait for people to read it because um, it's going to be totally unexpected. Nice. Um, 
and I, and like I said, you know, the, it's coming out. It'll be out about fifteen months after I start working on full time in about three months, and then see what happens. That's cool, man. I love it. So you also mentioned uh, you jumped ahead of my questions, but I don't. <laughs> um, you know, I'm really excited about this upcoming Meg Legacy collector's box set. You know, let's. You know, what can you tell us about that? And you know, you know, just let's talk about that for a quick second, if you don't mind. Not at all. It sort of came about with Purgatory. You know, being the last one, I wanted it to be special. But uh, my publisher these days, you know, doesn't allow me to include extras in it, not even a map, not even uh, photos or anything like that. It just, it's not their fault. It's just things that become so expensive paper-wise. But I felt that since there's no way to complete the collection of books with hardbacks or paperbacks or whatever you need to do, it's, it just doesn't look well. It doesn't support it very well. And some hardbacks have just been out of public, out of print for 20 years, you know? Right. But so you end up buying used ones, the covers are torn, and that's not a collection. Right. So, but this way, um, the books will be twice as thick as a normal book, uh, faux leather, uh, three different designs, which are really nice. And um, each book will have one of the novels in it, and as well as novella, which connects uh, the stories. So that my idea is that right now we've got a patchwork of road work, I call it. You know, seven different uh, highways that connect each other, but connected by gravel. Sure. But this gives me a chance to fill in those distances. So you have one super highway that goes from the first book to the, the last book. That's cool. and, and in between, you've got my personal situation that's going on while these things are happening to me in the publishing world. You know, I'm, I'm going over some things that were like ridiculous highs and ridiculous lows that... Um, Certainly contributed to my Parkinson's, sure. uh, but um, you know here we are, ready for a second movie to come out. So, not too bad. Yeah, not too bad, man. I agree. And um, like you, like you mentioned, um, uh, the lock, Heaven's Lake. Um, you know what is the, you know what's the breakdown on that? I, I know that's an exciting one. Also, I've been. Uh, waiting for that for, you know, for a bit now. And that looks uh, super exciting. So. Yeah, it's the third in the lock series. And it's just taken, I've never worked on a book so long, so hard. Uh, it's just one of those things that um, I've probably been going at it four years now. But the first year I had uh, written the first hundred pages. And it just didn't feel right. And part of it was because I was burnt out. You know, I had written three or four books back to back, hadn't taken a break. And I needed the break between, not a break, a vacation break, but a, a break just from working on something different. So I, I elected to write um, a script that I had had an idea for and just put the first hundred pages aside and come back to them a year later fresh, threw out all of them, started again, had clear thoughts, and have been going good since there, ever since. It's probably my most... Probably the longest book I've ever written, no doubt. But it's also the most character driven because I've got some really bizarre characters in there. That's wild, man. That's so cool. And um, you know, can you see the lock ever being turned into a feature film also? That seems like a no brainer. I believe that it will be, and I think that we'll hopefully hear some kind of word about going into production in the near future. Wow. Brilliant, dude. Wow, that's so exciting. Super exciting. And um, you also have another project, uh, Sea Monster Cove. You know, I, I don't know if a lot of people know about it or, you know, what can you tell us about that project? That's super exciting. Sea so Monster Cove came to me in uh, December of, of uh, 2018. And it was just an amazing plot. I don't know where it came up, just sort of zapped in my head. And I uh, started developing it over the next three months. Uh, what it's basically about is that beneath the remains of this volcanic island, which is all true about the island, uh, there's um, an aquifer beneath the sea plate, located about three miles beneath the sea plate, that traces back to the Devonian period, oh, which wow. is about um, 380 million years ago. Wow. And these creatures have been trapped in there. Well, it's their habitat now. 
And, uh, you know, the story goes on with uh, a marine scientist who comes by and sees the clues and they end up saving uh, two of the, uh, the uh, deceased mothers, uh, this, uh, this huge mako shark, prehistoric mako shark. And um, anyway, the idea of it, I thought it was originally for a uh, TV series. But the more I did it, the more I realized I really want to see these creatures for myself. Because the plot is that they bring the creatures up into this futuristic aquarium and there people can come and see them. So I ended up spending a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of resources of building this thing. And it's really cool because you can actually go there and cage dive into their habitat and they know you're there and they will circle you and attack. It's wild. Yeah. That's so cool, man. I love it. And um, you also, um, you had uh, uh, the web TV series also, which was part of that. That's pretty cool. So where Sea Monsters Roam, I got the idea about uh, the end of 2018 and was looking to develop it as a TV series. But then I, I realized I wanted to take it a step further. I want to use CGI to create these creatures and have some kind of website that you can actually go there and see them for yourself. And so we created this entire world. I can't describe it anymore other than to say, if you look up Sea Monster Cove on YouTube, you'll be able to take a look at all facets of it. And it's really wild and it's a great site. And, uh, you know, the membership, we're doing a membership drive right now, $1.95 a month to be a member. Wow. But we're looking to get a million members so we can have um, enough money to keep a steady flow to produce these series and to build some really cool special effects stuff. Uh, right now, the special effects are uh, motion picture equal because the guys I hired work on motion pictures and do all the sharks and sea creatures. Oh, wow. Top quality. But the second phase that we're looking to raise money for, uh, it's going to be wild. Oh, it's exciting, man. So exciting. I can't wait. And you're also very active on social media with your fans and you're always giving updates, and I really, I really like that. So, what do you enjoy most about that interaction for you? You know, there is for someone to take the time to email me; they deserve a reply. And I, I said that from day one that I was an author, and uh, it's gotten a little busier. You know, don't move as quick as I used to, and but I'm still able to keep it up to a certain extent. So, you know. These, you know, make fans of our friends. I consider them family. Sure. So they've given me the support and they deserve it back. That's cool. Yeah. I remember picking up Meg, like I said, back in the, back in the late 90s, I picked up their first book. And now on my shelf, I have all, you know, all of them proudly displayed. You know what I mean? So we've been with you since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to get you a signed legacy set. Oh, you know it, man. That's my dream. <laughs> That's cool, Steve. Thanks so much, man. Well, listen, I uh, I want to say thank you so much for taking out some time. Um, Meg comes out August 4th. It's going to be huge, guaranteed. And, um, you know, hopefully down the line we can chat again soon. So, Yeah, and for any of your listeners, uh, Meg Legacy is only sold at MegLegacy.com, and you'll see the choices that you have there. Some of the uh, sample chapters and pretty wild. I'm so happy we're doing it. I'll make sure to link it up so everyone can get right to it. You know what I mean? Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. No problem, man. All right, cool. Well, listen, I appreciate the time, and we'll chat soon. Thank you. Thank you.